great effort by that elementary school kid. Indeed. Welcome back to Channel 5 News. I'm Damien. And I'm Maddie. And now let's take a look at our on-field reporter, Scott, who's going to take us through the physics behind lifting. Thanks, Damien. I am here live in front of the weight room. According to Britannica Online, perfect location to take the first date. So, I have heard from our news reporters that the top location uh, to see two expert weightlifters are here in the weight room. <laughs> so, um, we're going to go live to them now, see how well they're doing. Thanks, Scott. Now we're going to look at the physics behind the bench press. In order to do that, let's take a look at the Newton's first two laws. His first law states that an object in rest stays at rest unless acted upon by a net force. And his second law says that the net force equals mass times acceleration. When you're doing bench, you want to try to keep a constant velocity the whole time, which means the acceleration would be zero, which means that the net force would also be zero. If you take a look at our free body diagram over here, you, the uh, force of the, bar, of the bar by your hands would be the same as the downward force of mg. However, in order to start the bar and get it to that constant velocity, you need a little bit of force acting on it. Therefore, for just a tiny bit of your, of your bench to get it to that constant velocity, you will have a net force that is either greater than or less than mg, depending on if you're starting from the bottom or the top. So, as previously stated, the net force when doing the bench press is equal to zero, and even though you may be pressing the barbell up and down, you still have a work of zero. So therefore you're doing no work when you're doing the bench press. Now let's look at the physics behind the dumbbell row. <laughs> So when looking at dumbbell rows as opposed to the bench press, Newton's second law, uh, which states net force equals mass times acceleration is different because when you're doing dumbbell rows, you accelerate the weight upward, which would create a larger force on the bar due to your hands as seen in our free body diagram. And uh, that force is greater than the force due to mg and therefore you have a net force when accelerating the dumbbell up. All right, so Liam already established that there's a net force when doing dumbbell row exercise. And we can take a look at the work equation, which is work equals force times displacement. So you already know there's a, there's a force acting on it. And the displacement when you row towards your body, there, there, that establishes a displacement. So there will be a, a work, or you will be doing work when uh, doing the dumbbell row exercise. But when you start back at your starting position, the displacement is zero, so there will be no work done on the exercise. Bruh. How many more? 